Hey guys, Basil and Will with Grayson Hobby, and today we have a cool tech tip with the servo tester from GT Power. Not only is it a servo tester, it does something else that's really cool. It will save you from possibly going to the hospital. Sure. This is the servo tester, uh, 3 one servo tester from GT Power. Uh, this little guy right here is just a newer version of what we've had in the past with a little plastic case. It's got the metal case on it. Nice, uh, something you don't get crushed accidentally in your bag. Where's the other one? Uh, the old one, upgrade from that one that... Uh, the death of that one was always in the bottom of your gear bag and getting crushed by something. Yeah, so you can see it's this is <laughs> well, actually you slide it out, or can you slide it out? Uh, no, so really. that's just it basically like a, like yeah. a, it's like a thin credit card material. Yeah, it's like the old spectrum receiver stuff. Yeah. And now hey, yeah, the new one, new one is aluminum, metal. Um, all right, so basically, a lot of people call and they're like, "Hey, I can't get my ESC to program. It's just beeping at me, etc." And my common answer is, well, let's take the radio out of the equation. Let's get a servo tester and calibrate the ESC that way. So it's really not a servo tester. It's a servo and ESC tester. Sure. We'll go with that. But I like to use that to rule out any issues with radio, especially a lot of these newer gyro receivers that don't arm in for like several seconds, et cetera. Um, this is a nice way to little bypass that. Um, so if you ever talk to me and ask me that question, you go, what's a servo tester? That's what it is. Well, also a lot of guys don't know how to program their ELRS stuff, and so... Yeah, this is just taking out the radio out of the yeah. equation. So when you're troubleshooting, you can take other factors out and just use that for testing. All right, let's So go. let's go ahead and show you guys what we're doing. So what do you need? So in order to use the servo tester, I like to use a speed control to, to rob my power for 5 volt, because you need 4.8 to, to 6 volts to power the servo. Okay. So that's going to give you clean power. A lot of guys back in the day were like, oh, let's just plug a balance lead in. Don't do that. That's how you fry them. Okay. Uh, which, with the metal case on it, it's kind of hard to do now. So you do need a power supply. Guess what? Your planes, your drones, all that, they typically have a 5-volt power supply on it. So we're going to use my speed control here, which you can see the wire. I'm going to pull it out. This is from the speed control. So we're going to go ahead and plug that on the input side. Polarity Signal. matters. And first, we're going to test, show you guys what the servo functions are. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. So that there. Then we're going to take a servo. You can do up to three servos. And now the point of three servos is for helicopters, so you can set all three on the swash plate even. Um, I don't do much in helis anymore, so I don't have one to show you guys on that. But we're just going to plug in a servo. There's three different ports. Uh, Negative, positive signal, all three. If you're doing one server, it doesn't matter where it goes. doesn't right? matter where it goes. Okay. All three are going to output the same. Okay. Then we're going to put power to the speed control. So you can see the first mode that's going to light up is your manual mode. Okay. Manual mode is literally to where you can just run the servo. Okay. It's good for setting up an airplane. Yeah. When building it. And keep in mind that beeping is the speed control doesn't have signal right now. Mm -hmm. So, That's got that. Normal. The second mode is neutral, which that didn't show you guys. Here, let's go all the way one in. Neutral. So, or center. Yeah, or that's going to center the servo. Okay. And then the third one is sweeping mode. This will test the servo to see, like, if you have a, a stripped gear or something like that. I put just a little bit of resistance on it. And usually, say you got a, a servo with a stripped gear, you can hear it pop and click and stuff like that. But this will make sure your servo has got full range of motion. And you can kind of get an idea of what you have for motion on your servo. Not as used as you'd think. Um, mainly, you're going to use your manual one and your neutral for setting up. Uh, so if I got a plane here and I want to set up my servos, I can plug in like my ailerons and all that and center them up. Granted, this was already set up on a different plane. So let's see. Uh, we can set our servos on here with our neutral, and I guess I was pretty dang good on that. So they're sweeping. So that's the neutral. You can see there, manual, I can move yeah. it. Manual. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, that's the manual mode. And then neutral, you see, I guess I did pretty good on that one, huh? Mm -hmm. um, and then you got the sweeping to see the range of motion, see if you've got any binding, anything like that. I don't recommend using that with control surface hooked up, because if you have a control surface that doesn't have a lot of range, you could potentially bind up, damage your servo, et cetera. Yeah. So I usually would go with the manual, and the neutral on that yeah, one. Yeah. Or center. You call it neutral. I always call it center. Centering, yeah. Okay. So that's, so that's that servos. part. Everyone's that's probably servos. familiar with that one. So, so it's going to unplug the battery here. The cool and thing is what I want Now, to the say. last part I like to talk about is calibrating the speed control. So 
some radios don't have full range of output from the compared to the factories that, that they were set up in. Uh, think of pulse width from 1,000 to 2,000. Some radios go like 12 or 1,020 to 1,988. They got a weird range. And what happens is the rate it doesn't detect all the way bottom on the speed control, so it thinks the speed the, your throttle sticks partially up, and it's a safety feature. And then you get beep 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 really fast beeping on a lot of the speed controls. So what you can do to calibrate your speed control, make sure the radio is not the problem. You can plug this in. Now we're not gonna put this on the input side because my speed control has a five volt back in it. We're gonna put it on the output side. That way it works with the knob. So we're gonna put negative to output here. This is the ESC now. This is the speed control, correct. Mm -hmm. So this is my speed control line. I'm gonna turn it all the way to low, all the way to the clockwise is high, counterclockwise low. Hold on one second. Notice we have the uh, yeah the props off. Prop, I just got a piece you of put tape a piece of tape there. there so you can see the motor spinning easily in the camera. So yeah, all right, all right. So next thing we're gonna do. So yeah, where did you put that both in the video? Hold on one second. Where did you? All the way low. All the way low. All right. So all the way low. Gotcha. We're gonna plug in. Now in this case, this has already been calibrated. So get there. One two three. Yeah, but you'll see that I can move the motor variable position. So let's say that we had it in the wrong spot. That's this is what you would normally get. That. That means your ESC is not calibrated. So okay. you can use this tool to calibrate. So say I'm at low throttle, I'm having that problem. We can take the servo tester, turn it all the way up to clockwise, max throttle, plug in, obviously with the prop off, get the calibration, turn it down. Now the ESC just found it's low, and now I can set it up again. So that's a good way to bypass, take off your finger. World's worst prop right there, guys. <laughs> um, so now you can set your speed control to know that it's working. You can bypass your radio and use some troubleshooting with the servo tester. So that's a great little tool to have. Uh, not a lot of money, great for the, the toolbox in the radio box, keep it at the field, stuff like that. And I'll tell you why this is important, because sometimes Everybody will probably agree with me. Let's say your airplane's plugged in and I don't know, your phone or something is behind your radio. Ring, ring, ring. You want to grab? Oops. <laughs> Boom. Now you have full throttle and your plane is just well, taking off. Well, also this tester gives you a neutral zero. The radio, if you don't set it up properly, could have extra trim in it, could well, have strong yeah, yeah. sub trim, stuff like that. This puts you on a level playing field. Whereas the radio, if you didn't set up, especially if you're new to it, you may have settings that you didn't know in there, if you, especially if you copy a model, you could have crazy trims and expos and all that in it, and it could be throwing off your rates. So you may have you know, 20 degrees extra throw to the right and not know it, or clockwise. Yeah. So this will allow you to center everything up mechanically before ever adding the radio to the equation. Beautiful. All right, well, thanks for the tech for the day. All right, guys, there you go.